The first animal I ever heard speak was a black and white guinea pig named Mrs. Pancake. She lived in a large blue cage at the daycare mom took me to while she worked at a hospital at Fort Benning, Georgia. I fed Mrs. Pancake my unwanted goldfish crackers and stale pretzel rods. Keep em coming, kid, keep em coming, Mrs. Pancake said, rocking on her back and rubbing her swollen, furry belly. The first time the guinea pig spoke to me, I thought I was just imagining it. I had a pretty hyperactive imagination then. But this guinea pig looked straight at me and struck a deal. You keep me nose deep in snacks, and I'll poop on the toy hogging snot over there who keeps biting you. So at four years old, I realized I could hear animals talk and immediately started a business as a toddler snack stealer. I never told my parents about it. My dad is thousands of miles away, dodging bullets and bombs. My mom is worried about my dad, thousands of miles away, dodging bullets and bombs. They don't need a freak kid to worry about, too. Of all the animals I've talked to, though, none has ever prepared me for the sight of my abuela stomping off into the dark woods with a knife. She didn't come back to the house until after I went to bed, and I was too scared to ask her about it in the morning. I sit in science class sketching a picture of abuela fighting a zombie deer with a large wooden spoon her purple hair flying in the wind as she jabs at the deer's glowing red eyes. Miss Umala drones on. She's still reviewing how to find density since most of the class failed her pop quiz. Her abnormally long neck juts forward each time she says, Volume. Maria Carmen sits in front of me, squinting at the fluorescent lights, hanging from the ceiling as she flips her braids over her shoulder. Talib leans his head on his hand next to me, playing tic-tac-toe with himself on his paper. I'm not sure how that works. To my right, I hear Brandon, the camo-wearing bully, whisper to a kid next to him, Dad and I shot a deer yesterday. Big old doe. I worry about the white-tailed deer I drew in the woods yesterday and decided to call Chela. I know for a fact that deer season doesn't start for two weeks, so Brandon isn't just a military wannabe. He's a bad hunter, too. Miss Humala claps and says, Before we continue, Principal Jelani has asked all the teachers to make an announcement. Students are not to walk through the woods before or after school. Make sure you take the roads through town to get home. She narrows her eyes and scans the room. I strongly recommend that you follow Principal Jelani's instructions. We've had too many strange animal disappearances in town, and we don't know what's in the woods. So best to just stay away. The students around me start to murmur. I look at Maria Carmen. She flips the pink goat tag between her fingers and then shoves it into her pocket. Talib sighs next to me. I guess I won't figure out what happened to my dog, but I don't really want to get eaten out there either, so good call, he says. The glint from Abuela's knife flashes in my brain. At least if no one else is supposed to be out there, they won't see her stomping around doing whatever it is she's doing. 